fourth episode of the Fables for Knitting. My name is Helena. I am the knitwear designer behind Fable Knitwear by Helena Arneson. This is the fourth episode, as I said, uh, and I am going to go back to showing you some of my patterns, talking you through them, uh, showing you some sketches, all that jazz. Um, but first, I want to take a minute to acknowledge the very important discussion that has been raging the fiber community for the last couple of weeks. It is a discussion about race and privilege and not everyone having the great warm experience that I, as a white knitter, have had. And this is long overdue and very important. I I figured I would just be use myself as the prime example of what privilege is. I am a white Scandinavian knitter. I tick all the boxes. If you were to have a global survey of what the ideal knitter should be, I'm pretty sure I tick most of those boxes. Not because I've done anything to deserve them, I just happen to have won that lottery, which is what privilege is. And the worst thing is I was living in this happy little knitting bubble just naively thinking everyone had the same experience that I had. I started knitting again as an adult. I was welcomed when I went into yarn shops. They helped me with a smile and asked, answered all my questions. When I start, when I went to the first meeting, sort of knitting night where I didn't know anyone, I was, I felt welcome. And there's always just been this general I get the feeling that people think, of course you can do it, it's in your blood. And when I tell people I'm a knitter, they're like, oh, oh, sure, of course you are, let me see what you do. And it's always greeted with enthusiasm and warmth. What has become apparent is that this is not the norm, and it should be. And I guess one of the reasons that it's not the norm is because knitters such as myself have like, I've not even noticed, and that's so horrible. I've just thought... I'm very aware of social situations in every other aspect of life. But for some reason, in knitting... I don't even know why, and that is privilege. I've not even had to give a single thought to this matter. Which is why this conversation is so long overdue. I should have realised this from the beginning, but I haven't. And for that, I'm very sorry. Genuinely, very, very sorry. And I've seen a lot of white knitters say stuff along the night of, but I've not done anything wrong. And like, no one's saying you have, but in not even thinking of the mistreatment some people are having in this community and not being welcomed in solely due to their skin colour or their ethnicity is we can do better than that let's let's make an effort we need to listen to what's being said we need to take note and we need to start paying attention we need to call out our friends or our colleagues or random people who unfortunately make these things happen even if it's uncomfortable we need to do that it's not even i don't even think this is an uncomfortable topic i could just get really angry and i get angry at myself for not having had the brains to think outside my own comfort um but yes i'm not i'm not gonna go on about this for ages i just wanted to Acknowledge it, and I wanted to give you a prime example of privilege. Acknowledge it. It just means that you've been dealt 
dealt a hand with a higher currency in today's society built by the white man, which I have, and others have not, uh, but willfully choosing to ignore it. It makes you complicit, so don't. That is just, that is my point of view, that is uh, what I have gathered from the talk, um, the conversation happening. If I am wrong or if I am saying something that doesn't resonate with the people of colour that are being, that are on the receiving end of the harassment in the knitting community, do let me know. I am here to learn. My eyes are open as they should have been from the start. This week I want to talk about my first ever pattern and the patterns that derived from it. The first time I knit for a spray jacket, it was knit back and, forth, back and forth with sewn in sleeves. I think I have a picture. And I hate sewing in sleeves. It's it's just not my thing. And I wanted to, I, I knit so many of it. Sewing it, sewing it together, top down, bottom up. Um, and then, because I knew the silhouette that I wanted, I just wasn't sure how to create it. I knew I wanted a fitted, high waisted jacket with the vintage 1930s, 40s style with puff shoulders. And then I discovered Maya Carlson's. She has a couple of really gorgeous cardigans called Yeshud and this one called Rusa. And it is knit top down and it has puff shoulders. And it was the first time I had seen a modern knitting pattern with puff shoulders that were knit in, they weren't sewn in. And at this point, I was knitting for my own purpose. I was knitting it for me. I wanted to figure out how to do this for myself. I had no intention of publishing. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so I knit her shoulders, but with my design. I got a lot of, a lot of comments on Instagram asking for patterns. And I started thinking about it and figured, well, I can try. But then I'd used her shoulders and it just didn't sit right with me so I sent Maya an email and I asked her about them had she developed the technique herself had she read it in an old magazine somewhere like how did this happen because and complimenting her on uh, how beautiful her pattern was and she graciously graciously replied that she had spent hours and hours and hours making it she was very proud of it as she should be and that for private knitting, as I, which is what I was doing at that point, you know, you can pick and mix features of patterns as you please. If you want, I saw someone had used the silhouettes of one of my patterns and done another colorwork pattern in the middle, and it was gorgeous. And do that; that's great fun. Uh, so don't ever worry about doing that. If when publishing, that's a different matter. And Talking to Maya, we both agreed that when publishing, that would just, it wouldn't be right. It would, it would just be copying. It wouldn't be paying respect to her genius. So it was back to the drawing board and I wanted to do a bottom up pattern. I prefer that. I know a lot of people prefer top down. I don't know. It's maybe, maybe just a nostalgic thing that I quite enjoy. And it took, oh God knows how many tries it took to get the right silhouette. So I had to figure out how many increases to do, where to place them in regards to height, where to put them in regards to whip, I guess, of the sleeve, or how many to do, when to decrease, all that jazz. And finally, in December 2017, it was ready for publication. It is the one I'm wearing. I knit this in red in Pickles Merino Tweed colour mellow right before Christmas, this like this Christmas. The original one that I knit is this. It is very, very worn. It needs to be blocked again. Um, it looks a bit worn, I guess. Um, there it is. 
It is knit in the colour Milk. And it ha it's knit back and forth. It has puff shoulders, as I mentioned. It is knit in stockinette and it has this berry stitch running up the front. I found a very similar berry stitch in an old knitting catalogue that I have. Uh, in it was slightly different, but in that pattern it had it was called a no skay stitch. It's also in other vintage magazines and publications called like in different, there are many variations of this with several strands and several bobbles and and sometimes they call bouquets and sometimes cherries called pine forest berries. Um, they run up both sides. It is slightly cropped, so it will work well with any high waisted garment. Although, as I always say, if you want it longer. Just make sure you have enough yarn and knit to your heart's content and to the measurements that you want. Always a tip that I've discussed, a tip that I have discovered for myself is knit two centimeters more than what you think you need to. Um, just it works for me. If I don't do it, it's always just a bit too short, and I am a, I am tall, so maybe that's why. This is also the Merino Tweed from Pickles. When I was designing this, I, when I knit the first ones, I was just using a cheap manufactured yarn. And, but I wanted, as I was publishing, and needed to have a recommended yarn, I wanted to support a, a independent business. And I contacted Pickles, said, I'm designing this, and I want to use your yarns, but do you have any recommendations? And I was fully intending to buy this yarn. I just wanted to know what they thought. And I sent them the picture of the one that I'd knit in a different yarn. And they told me I could come pick up yarn and they'd give it to me. And I was blown away. Who was I to get free yarn? There's nobody had never published anything ever in my life. But they they liked the design and I was, ah, uh, thank you Pickles. After that, I have collaborated with Pickles on all of my patterns. Uh, they, I, I buy all the yarns that I'm using for publish, for private use. So this, I, I wasn't designing this, I just wanted one in this colour. I bought it, uh, as I should. And when I design, I they give me yarn for designs. <clears throat> this is the colour milk. It is, let me see if I can show you some of the speckles. It's speckled in sky blue and like a warm butter yellow. This one is speckled in dark blue, sky blue, black and a bright red. I think it's my favourite colour of it is the perfect burgundy. It's very warm and it has no hints of purple. I dislike them when they veer too much towards aubergine. I'd rather they be more oxblood red. And this one is... Um, yes, I published this on the 7th, I think, of December 2017 and it is, to this, to this very date, my best-selling pattern. Uh, thank you everyone who has knitted. Uh, in my humble opinion, <laughs> I'm not very humble, uh, <laughs> it, um, it goes with everything. All season, all seasons, all year, with everything. I lent the cream one, I went to a wedding last summer and <clears throat> the bride asked if she could borrow it for the evening when it was colder. I of course said yes. She looked so beautiful. It was such fun to see it worn and at such a formal, grand occasion. She looked stunning in it. And there are so many great versions that everyone has done. So have a look at the Forest Bray Jacket hashtag on Instagram in Norwegian. It's called Skogsbergjacke. I never know when to 
quit and so I continued in this forest berry line for quite some time because I was very happy with it and wanted to keep developing developing it. So I need a dress. Yeah, this is oh I will show you a picture, that might be easier. The forest berry dress is knit from the bottom up back and forth. It it buttons all the way so that it can double as a jacket or a duster, I guess. It's <laughs> it's not a quick project. There's a lot of stockinette, there's a lot of stitches at the bottom of the skirt. But I do think that it is worth it. Recently someone posted one and she hemmed it up a bit so or hemmed it up she'd adjusted it so that the skirt wasn't as long and obviously that will make it a quick in it and it was equally as lovely she looked beautiful again have a look at the hashtags to see what other people how other people look in these things uh, I knit this in the colour Skara it is such a delicate spring colour. It's speckled in like acid yellow and sage green. There you have berry pattern. Here you have some buttons. These finding good buttons in Oslo is very, very difficult, unfortunately. And these were my go-to buttons. They go with everything and then they stopped stocking them. So that sucks. It also has a belt. I can find it. I need to find it. I'll show, I'll show you a picture. I found a gorgeous 1920s buckle from it on Etsy with jade, which is the exact same colour as this. And so oh, it was a perfect match. And the brass, it has brass filigree and it's got the, which is the exact, exact same shade of brass as the button. So it was meant to be. I'm just a bit worried about where I put it now. Um, it goes to just below the knee, but as I said, it's quite easy to adjust to the length that you want. I am planning another one. I'm not sure which colour. Not white or cream and not maroon. We'll see, maybe like a yellow, golden yellow would be very nice. We'll see. The yarn. Pickles Merino Tweed Yarn is very light and airy. I'm wearing it straight on my skin, which I always do. It doesn't itch a single bit. I then, as I said, I don't know when to stop. Knit a scarf or a, like a keyhole scarf or an ascot or a Miss Marple scarf, which is the type of scarf that this happens and then it has a keyhole here and a keyhole here and you just pop one through. The normal Miss Marple scarf, there's a free pattern on Etsy, on Etsy, on Ravelry, is just plain. This has berries running up the front to make a bit of a, to make it a bit more, make it a bit more. Um, I knit this in just some leftover, cheap leftover yarn. You can knit it with pretty much any yarn on most needles. I've used four millimeters. If you opt for three or five or six, you know, the size will vary a bit, but there's really no set, nothing set in stone with stuff like this. It's very cozy. It's really quite, this isn't necessarily a flattering neck with a wide boat neck, but it does, it's the type of scarf that you can wear indoors and outside without feeling like you're walking around with a massive scarf, like a blanket around your neck. Uh, this is quick and easy. Um, on a note, just a quick note on <sighs> prizing patterns while I'm in that vicinity of thoughts. I don't do free patterns. I am, in fact, against free patterns. I 
think it's in Norwegian you say something is an u thing, which means it's a toxic habit. I'm not sure if there's a word for it in English. It means something is a certain way, but it undermines other values. So for instance, I worked I have a degree in costume design and I worked in film for many years after that. For the first few months, I was expected to work for free. That was just the norm. This was in London. And that's an new thing. It's the way it is, but it's not the way it should be. And it undermines my education and the skill that I had acquired by expecting me to work for free. And I know this translates into many other fields, um, especially creatively. And I think by giving away free knitting patterns, you are creating an expectations in your knitters that things, small items should be free. Um, they expect it and it undermines the hours designers spend creating the patterns and the skill that they have uh, in both in designing and in pattern writing and in scaling all these things are undermined when consumers expect things for free. And so I don't do it. I'd rather charge 20 kroners, which is what, like two euros or two uh, uh, pounds for something as a token, just because I'm against giving out free patterns. Now I've given some thought to this. If you buy an indie sewing pattern, no one bats an eye if they have to pay 15 pounds or 15 euros for that. Like, of course you do. It's Imagine the time and resources spent creating that pattern. But for some reason with knitting, if something costs only just like a quid more than the standard, people won't pay for it. And I think this is an uthi. The reason, of course, that this is the way is in back in the day, the designers for the knitting patterns was mostly designers working for yarn companies. So they created patterns to sell yarn. Patterns weren't their main income. And when that's the case, it works. So for people, people who give away free patterns with kits and stuff, I get that. I'm for that. But you can't expect free patterns from indie designers who don't make patterns solely so they can sell their yarn. And back in the day, everyone, you bought, you bought sewing patterns. You didn't get them for free. You went out and you bought them. You bought your 1940s simplicity pattern in 1940. Whereas knitting patterns, you bought one magazine and you got 30 for free. So it's just so ingrained in us, just as a community, that knitting patterns should be either free or cheap. And if we are to support indie designers, and we want to, of course we want to, there are so many beautiful patterns out there and it's so much to choose from. So why not pay an extra two pounds or two euros for something that is made with such thought and such care and such curated knowledge and skill instead of I, I just, it frustrates me that knitters for some reason keep wanting and expecting to get these things for free when the market has changed as much as it has and, is, and thinking about how many talented indie both dyers and designers and indie all these things and you expect to pay the same thing that you did when this was all uh, when the market was run by big, big um, organisations. So just, uh, that, those are just my two cents. You are, of course, free to disagree with me. But if you ever have think, oh, that's a bit steep for a pattern, then just take a second. Is it really, how much more expensive is it? Because chances are it's only like a pound or two more expensive than what you originally what you're used to buying or what you're used to paying for patterns I think that's not even the price of a cup of coffee and it takes a whole lot more time 
to make that pate than it does for that barista to make that coffee. So just, if, if you, I would urge everyone to just have a think the next time you react to a price. Yes, so that is this, probably in that norm should have been a free pattern. It costs 20 kroners. Um, if you want the free one, you can get a Miss Marple one, which is ornament free. It's still lovely. Uh, I did another forest berry pattern. This is the forest berry skirt. This is knit in the rounds. These are purely decorative, the buttons, so that it looks like it buttons up the front. Having a skirt that buttons up at the front isn't necessarily very practical. The dress is practical because you can wear it as a jacket. I don't think you could wear this as like a butt cape. You could, but I've never seen anyone do it yet. Maybe you'll be the first. It has the berry pattern running down the front and it also has the berry pattern running along the hem. Oh, this has been flat for a while. Let's pull them up. It's one of the best features, in my opinion. It has pockets. Pockets is. They are knit and then sewn on at the very end. It's when I make this, I wanted sort of paper way, paper bag waist. So. It's designed to wear with a belt. If you wear it without a belt, chances are it's gonna to be too big. So if you're missing this and you're thinking, this looks like it's not gonna fit my waist, it is meant to have with a belt. It's got belt loops and everything. It does say in the pattern, but just in case. Anyone was wondering, if that's not your thing, you can also always sew in an elastic on the inside. That way it's gonna fit beautifully without a belt. Uh, it is knit in merino tweed in the colour nature, I'm guessing nature or natural or something. It is a lovely sandy beige with speckles of white and black and grey. I've worn this. I wore this a lot last spring and a lot this winter so it goes well you can I also wore it in summer just without without tights underneath and then for winter I always wear at least two pairs let's have some more tea shall we and then I have a pattern that is not a forest berry pattern it is self sufi there yeah okay I'm not sure how you pronounce it in English. Sylphid, sylphid. It's a French word, I maybe think. So, sylphid. This is it. It is my fairy tale jacket. It has. The idea came in summer because of blue belts. There's and it's just an estate right up the street that in May has the whole lawn is covered in blue bells under apple trees. It's very, very picturesque. And this idea came to me. Blue bells. I don't know if you can see it. So I had the idea and I sketched it down. Maybe I still have it. This is like an old sketchbook. Oh, I do still, or I've, I cut it out from the old one and put it into this. This was the original sketch. And I remember drawing it and thinking, I genuinely have no idea how to do this. Not a single clue, but I'll try. I will, God damn, will try. And try I did, and it took a long time. 
but I figured it out in the end. So it has, it's knit in reverse stockinette, so it's all purled on the outside and knit on the inside. This is the back with the bluebell pattern, run, bluebell pattern running up the back of it. It has a square neckline. As I mentioned before, it is, I, in my opinion, the most flattering neckline. It's more of a springtime neckline in summer. It is quite open. Square neckline here. It has very blousing bishop sleeves. These sleeves also have blue bells. Let me see, I'll just do this. Maybe it'll show off better. Knit over knit. It's very dramatic, very 1930s drama, which is the best of drama. And here are the bluebells. These, uh, so the back, the bluebells at the back are knit, sort of mirroring. So you have a centerpiece and then they're mirrored. Uh, just because that was, in the end, the, moment, the prettiest, in my opinion, way of doing it. However, the, oh, look how big they are. <laughs> the, um, the sleeves are not mirrored. There's a set around of stitches and there's different bluebells and then on that end it starts again, but you get, uh, an array of different heights and shapes of bluebell. This yarn is Pickles Merino Tweed again. It is the colour Nusna. I think. It has such fun speckles. It's a really it's like it's like a dewy blue, but then it has speckles of pink and sky blue and green. It's just, again, it's the perfect colour of spring. I am, I do, I am looking forward to wearing it. It's very cold now, so I have, I've pretty much been wearing high uh, turtleneck things all winter. Look at these buttons. I can't remember where I bought these, but they are very beautiful, yes. So the reason this is knit in reverse stockinette is of course so that you can see the patterns and the stalks of the flower and the flower, if everything was knit in stockinette, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So that is the reason. I know a lot of people are not that fond of pearl stitching. The Norwegian way of pearl stitching is quite quick. I don't mind it, obviously, as I do a lot of stockinette. And I quite like it's very delicate and fragile when you look at when the pearl stitches are on the outside in reverse. Uh, yeah, as well this is cropped or oh, it's got raglan sleeves as has this forest braid jacket and the forest braid dress. That was, as I, I didn't start knitting in collections until I did the Hallux collection last autumn. After that was done, and after I did the Yuletide collection, I went back into all my patterns and I sorted them into collections. So this is a collection, but it was done in hindsight. I call this the Artemis collection. Artemis is the Greek goddess of the hunt, as this is quite a foresty, fairy tale -y. All these patterns have those elements, I figured. That would be a good matron name for them, or for the collection. So yes, I did not knit this in a collection. They are not knit after each other or at the same time. They were simply sorted in that way in hindsight, because I like order and sim and yeah, I like order and things to be tidy. And by having everything in collections, things are tidy in my head. Um, Yes, that is the Art Artemis collection. I hope it was insightful. Since the last video, I have been doing a lot of things. I built a website 
for Fabel Knitwear, which is called fabelknitwear.com, where there's an about section, there you can shop knitting patterns, and there's also a shop section for other things which has not yet gone live. It will. I am. Um, oh, as soon as we decide on doing it, I've just had this constant state of not stress but impatience. I can't wait to get started, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting on a lot of supplies, and I'm just. When is it gonna come? If I get an idea, I need to act on it now. No, I'll never. Because I'm, yeah, quite stupid like that. But exciting things are coming. As I mentioned, I am very picky and particular about the things that I surround myself with. I'll because you're spending so much time and effort into making knitting these beautiful creations. So why would you use an ugly stitch market? for example. <laughs> uh, so that's just me being a massive snob. But what can you do? So I'm not going to go into detail, but suffice to say, as a hint, there will be aesthetically pleasing things, <laughs> at least in my opinion. It will launch this spring. So stay tuned for very exciting things to come. Also, since last time I filmed, I finished the my cream sugar plum jumper. Ta-da! Oh, it's so lovely. I'm always <laughs> whenever I show off a sugar plum jumper, I just I'm probably always gonna do this. Oh, I just wanna wrap myself in it. If you've knit one, you will know what I mean. Knit in Pickles Cozy, which is a blow yarn. Knit on 5mm needles. Cropped. High double neckline, which folds over. Slight bishop sleeves. And... Oh, ribbed cuffs. I have two now. Oh, it's cold. Oh. Um, yeah, that's apart from having finished the Sugar Plum Jumper, I have started working my next collection. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you anything just yet. I want to have some actual things to show before I do that. What I will say, I, I went, I paid out all my yarns and everything. What I will say is my inspiration is very romantic French, French countryside, if that makes sense. Some, uh, some might get where I'm getting at with that and some will not and we'll just have to wait and see. But that is my prime inspiration. It will be very simple and very romantic and a very Provence yells, if that makes any sense to anyone other than myself. <laughs> uh, but that is what it will be. I've gone for very beautiful muted neutral colours. I am very excited to show you when the time comes. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed yourself and maybe got some knitting done while watching me blabber on. And have a lovely day. I will see you next time.